Hey everybody, it's Dean Bakari, author of Ignite Your Passion, Finding Fulfillment in a Busy World, and publisher of Passion Press Magazine. Listen, I wanna thank you for joining the PPM community here. And listen, if you're watching this video, then you're probably in a place right now where either A, you wanna find your passion, B, you want to pick your passion, or C, you are looking to make a profit with your passion. And what we're gonna do in these three videos that we've got coming up over the next few days, this three-part video series, is we're actually going to do exactly that. We're gonna talk about how do you find your passion? How do you pick between many passions if you're multi-passionate and you're passionate about many things? How do you hone in and focus on the one that you can really prosper and profit from? And how do you get around the right environment to really succeed with your passion? And then how do you sustain that passion into a profitable business long term? And we'll go over some successful and profitable business models and companies that you know about already that are using some of these formulas and strategies that we've got coming into play over these next few videos. So look out for that. The first video is going to be right here right now where we're actually gonna break down what are the nine pulses or charges or drives or needs of passion. People that are most passionate I've learned, if you don't know my story, throughout my journey to figuring out what, what's my passion, how do I figure this whole thing out for myself, I wanted to do something that I was happy about, that I was enjoying, that I loved to do, that lit me up so that I could be like, man, I love what I do every single day. Instead of like what 80% of the world does, which is wake up hating their life on Monday morning and looking forward to the weekend only and really wasting away their life, not doing what they love to do. So if you're watching this, then you either want to start a business, promote a product or a service or your expert knowledge and information so you can make more of an impact and an income doing what you love to do. And over the last few years, several years really at this point, I was able to really study a lot about what goes into the psychology, the biology, believe it or not, and the business of living your passion, doing what you love to do, and creating products that you love and sustaining your passion into a long-term successful business. How do you do that? Again, in this video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about this nine-part framework that I've designed on how do you tap in to the nine pulses of passion. Now, it's split into two phases. The first phase is your proto-passion phase, that I call, where it contains your four baseline pulses of passion. And those baseline pulses of passion are your pulse for confidence, where not confidence in the traditional sense, but rather confidence that, hey, do I have food in the fridge? Am I gonna be able to eat? Am I confident that I will be able to generate an income with this passion of mine that I'm looking to make a profit from? And am I confident in my ability to promote myself? Can I dominate this realm? Okay, so the first pulse of passion is in the proto passion phase is gonna be your confidence. And then we move on to variety. Can I switch things up? Can I keep things exciting? Can I continuously innovate and develop new products and programs, new ideas? Can I contribute different ways of thinking and approaches and perspectives from myself, the ones that only I can develop? because they're unique to me and my experiences. And the way that I can help people is by offering that advice and bringing my message to the world and serving them in a meaningful way. The third pulse of passion in the proto-passion phase is validation. Now this is incredibly important because we've got two parts to validation. We've got your inner validation, which ignites from within, and then we've got outer validation. One is good, one is not. The outer validation, if you come from that space, then you're very, very reactive based on what everybody else is saying or thinking or advising you to do. 
you do. <laughs> and you don't want to come from that place unless the people that are advising you are doing things that you want to do or that are playing role models in your life or influential to you in your life. But if they are not living the life that you want to live, then I would not advise you <laughs> to take advice from them. It makes no sense. So aside from that, however, if somebody's laughing at you for what you want to do, for example, or if you've got a passion, you've got an idea, and you allow somebody to chop, chop, chop that idea down into something that you're no longer confident and excited and passionate about, then you're coming from that space of outer validation. Now, the space that you want to switch from, and switch to rather, is that place of inner validation where you are driving all of your thoughts. You're proactive on your passion and your need to really want to put that passion into play and make it make a product out of it, make a profit out of it. Do something that you absolutely love with that passion. So when you're coming from a place of inner validation, you're coming from an awesome place. So that's the that's that third pulse of passion that you want to ask yourself about. Where am I coming from? Am I coming from inner validation? Am I coming from outer validation? Am I letting other people dictate whether I'm happy or not? Or am I taking control of my life and am I really doing what I love to do on a daily basis? Next, we've got the pulse of connection. Now, this pulse of connection really has to do with other people. Are you surrounding yourself with the right environment? Because environment really is everything isn't it? You've heard it from other people. You're, you're going to hear it from me again. Relationships, people, your environment, so absolutely critical. And they are really everything that you do must be done through other people. The level of your success, let's say you create a program, right? And it's about how to make your own ice cream with this little ice cream machine. Well, if you don't promote that ice cream machine to other people, and tell them about it and hope that they tell other people about it, therefore sending and spreading that message to even more folks. If you don't sell that product to other human beings, if you don't learn from other people and apply the strategies that successful other ice cream makers have applied, and if you don't avoid the mistakes that they've made, then how will you ever, ever really succeed with your passion? If you're passionate about making ice cream with ice cream machines and you want to sell that product, how will you be able to do it if you don't tap into that pulse of connection? So it's really, really important that you tap into that pulse. Now, those are the baseline passion pulses. Now, if you really want to tap into long-term perpetual passion and take Where? everything to another level simply because you're tapping into some of these really perpetual passion pulses, then these are the ones that you're going to want to tap into. The first perpetual passion pulse, really the fifth pulse, is the pulse of mentality. How do you tap into that pulse of mentality? Are you waking up in the morning thinking about what you want or are you, think, are you waking up in the morning thinking about what you don't want? That's the pulse of mentality. Having the right mental state of mind for what you want and what you want to manifest and create in your life and, and, the, and the things that you want to achieve, the passion, the business you want to create with your passion. So very, very important that you tap into that. And then the sixth pulse of passion is the pulse of capability. Now, when I say capability, what I mean is there's two parts to capability. There's your natural talent that you're capable of, and then there's your skill, which is developed. A lot of folks don't know the difference between that. Talent is something that you're born with. Skill is something that is developed, honed, and done over time with practice daily, every single day. You can succeed with both, but you have to learn which space you're coming from because your level of exertion is going to depend on, hey, am I a naturally talented artist or am I not naturally talented, but actually passionate about this. If so, this is how much I have to do. This is what I need to do. And I need to figure out, and then I will succeed. That's the pulse of capability. Then finally, we move on to the pulse of 
creative liberty, which is absolutely important. If you're not creating, you're not succeeding, period. Especially in this age where we are more tapped into more things than ever before, where we have access to more information, more technology, we're more intertwined and we have the ability to communicate with people from across the world. Creative liberty is more important than ever. Innovation is more important than ever. So if you find your passion, you define what it is that your passion is, if you already know it, then can you continuously innovate and be more creative and put your own perspective or spin on that passion of yours and create a product, a service, a program with that. Finally, we move on to the pulse of growth. How many of us, all of us really, have been in a situation where you start a new job and you think you're passionate about it and you get really excited and pumped about what you're doing and then all of a sudden, one day, you wake up and it's like, huh, I'm not really pumped about going to work anymore. I'm not really pumped about my business anymore. I lost track um, on what I was doing and the daily grind and I'm not really excited about this anymore. Have you ever felt that way? If so, you're not alone because everybody has about something at a certain point in time in their life. And really the way to tap into that pulse of growth is to find a nice intersection of where growth meets with constant challenge because you can't grow unless you challenge yourself. Every time you challenge yourself, you grow a little bit more, which is why so many of us also get so bored so quickly with our jobs or what we do on a daily basis because not, maybe it's mindless, maybe it's not exciting, but really it's because you're not growing. So passion oftentimes is right at the intersection of where growth meets challenge. So the question is, are you growing? And if so, are you challenging yourself just enough to ignite that growth? Because that's the only way you can continuously grow. Challenge yourself a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, so you can continuously grow and feel passion. Okay? Transcendence. Perhaps, in my opinion, the single most important pulse of passion. It's about service. It's about helping others. It's about leaving a legacy. It's not living with a legacy, it's leaving behind a lasting legacy for your kids, for your customers, for your family, for humankind. That's what this final pulse of transcendence is about. So we have, we have confidence, we have variety, we have validation, we have connection. Those are the proto-passion pulses and then the perpetual passion pulses. We've got your mentality, capability, creative liberty, growth, and then finally transcendence to complete the nine pulses of passion. If you can take these nine pulses of passion and compare it to any business idea you have, product idea you have, service idea that you have, or if you're comparing it to a job that you're thinking about, you can immediately decipher upon whether you're going to feel passion for what you're doing or whether it's just gonna be so-so eh, or whether it'll die out a little bit sooner. If you can do that, you can speed up the rate at which you progress by so much, it's not even a joke. You don't have to try because now you'll know by comparing to this framework. So That's all we've got for today's video, folks. Thank you so much for tuning in and watching and Again, this concludes the, the first video, the nine pulses of passion. I really hope that this serves you. Keep an eye out for our next video titled Sensei Academy, where you're gonna learn all about how do you get yourself around the right people? How do you find a mentor? How do you develop relationships? How do you connect with people so that you can really speed up your progress with creating a profitable business, product, program, service, with your passion. How can you do that? I'll also give you a little bonus on that on different ways to interview one of the most effective ways to build a relationship with a potential mentor or get around the right people and that is to interview other people in your space. Now I'm going to give you a nice little template actually on how to do that so that you can just plug it into your niche or your space or your passion, contact those people and one, learn from them 
and two, potentially even create a product or program with that. Until I see you in the next video, thank you so much for tuning in and watching. Go out there every day, live to inspire, live with passion, and live to leave a lasting legacy.